15. Good serve, top the corner. Her mo Nako's mother, Junko, and uh, Karuma Bayashi, who's the coach of Nako. Side by side, Heidi Graf, Steffi's mom. Heinz Kuhnhardt, her coach. And very quickly, Steffi Graf wins the game to love to lead one love first set against Naoko Saomatsu of Japan. We'll be back. Graf has had a busy year. She's played in 10 tournaments. She's won six titles. $1.7 million. And it's only mid-August. Having trouble with her racket. She, that's the second time she's retaped it. Won Wimbledon Sorry. again this year. Mazda Cup. She better go quickly. Virgi call. Virginia Slims of Florida. The Family Circle Cup. The German and French Open. That's a career for most players. Salamatsu ready to serve, yeah, top of your screen. Down one game to love, but on serve. She's first serving for the first time in the match. Graf took longer than she uh, was actually allowed there. But umpire Donna Ring gave her the benefit of the doubt. Going to number one. <laughs> Good serve, too. It was. It was right right in her body. <laughs> Graf thought she was going to be able to run around the forehand. And in tonight's match versus last yeah, night where uh, no Roz Nidefer, uh, Roz is a very solid volleyer. She is comfortable coming into the net. She knows how to approach. Salmatsu, on the other hand, uh, really doesn't understand volley. She has a two-hand backhand volley, as we saw there. Doesn't have the strength to be able to handle Graf's tough ground strokes and passing shots. So the only way she's going to beat her is able to move Graf around, hope that Graf makes a few mistakes. Asamatsu is very fast, in, in, but uh, in this particular instance here, Graf was smart to get to the net. Even she herself uh, spent the majority of her early career at, back at the baseline, but she's made some good strides in getting into the net. <coughs> Not the best of the volleyer, but <laughs> adequate.
40-30. Those are the kind of points that Salamatsu is going to have to hope for. There's no question that had that ball gone over, Salamatsu was, was out of position. But Graf is a little bit vulnerable at times. She tends to, to rush when she wants to get matches over with quickly, and sometimes the errors will come. Again, yeah, Salamatsu. Salamatsu holds serve. We're tied one all in his first set. One game. 15th seed against the number one seed. A little difference there, Jim. I would say Salamatsu held serve. That's a technical term, but really Graf allowed her to hold serve there. That was uh, just the three unforced errors. Good team. Perfect pace for Graf. She likes this. Salamatsu trying to slow her down. Mother Junko's uh, motioning out, and she's very reserved. Looked wide from here. Forty fifteen. serve, leading two games to one over Naoko Sawamatsu. First set, third round action from the Matinee Limited International. And today from the Volvo International at New Haven, second round play, Mark Kaplan over Chris Pridham, 6-3 and 6-3. Pridham with the big upset yesterday over Richard Frombert. The 10th seed, Andre Agassi, and straight sets over Daniel Nestor, 4-4. Four and four. That's not a bad score for Nestor. He's getting closer. Yeah, he's... Uh... Regaining some confidence. We sort of saw that a little bit at Sun Life. He just uh, he had a uh, bad final against Andrew Schneider, but uh, up till then he started to show a little bit more of what everybody in Canada saw. January of 92, great match against Edberg. 
Now Kosal Matsu now to serve in the near court. Still on serve, trailing 2 1 first set to Steffi Graf. Hitting all four hands. Love 30. She's completely controlling the baseline with her forehand. As we saw last night, uh, when Graf is confident, the top spin back end works. She tries it. 99% of her back ends were hit with uh, underspin for most of her career. She's probably at a point now where about it's down to 95. She still uses it as her basic backhand shot. to Probably one. And make sure you join us win. for the TSN Turning Point later tonight, brought to you by Armorall. Tire foam protectant from Armorall. One spray, and even old tires look great. Ah, kind of makes you wish we made car foam. Tire foam from Armorall. Dean Love, Steffi Graf leading. 3 1, first set. Because Graf is hitting the ball so hard, Sa Sawamatsu has actually retreated to be behind the baseline. She's hitting awfully short. There's the first good 
good deep ball. 30 all. Since the first game. Good game. She finally got the necessary depth. Advantage Just long. The break now leads four games to one over Naoko Sawamatsu. First Stop set from the Matinee Limited International. Fourth game of this set provided the break that uh, Steffi Graf needed. She now leads four to one to Naoko Sawamatsu in the first set of this third round match. Too bad for Samatsu there because she recovered well on that forehand return. She's just plain uh, like she looks intimidated. Double break point now for Graf. Salamatsu almost looks as if when she's standing there and looking down the court, she can see Steffi Graf at the other end about 10 feet high. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's no question. And normally, uh, 
she moves her opponents around pretty well. Good counter attacker, changes the direction of the ball, takes it early. These two players like to take the ball early in, in different fashion. Graf likes to take the ball early on the, on the rise. Sawamatsu likes to take it early in order to be able to change the direction. Ah. Second double faults. Steffi Graf has the break, and she leads five games to one as Sawamatsu drops her racket in disgust. Chance to serve out the first set. Well, after that double fall, you have to look at from Sawamatsu's position. He's saying it's hard enough to win a point against Steffi Graf. What am I doing giving away points so easily on a double fault? Set point. Gaming first set graph six games two. Steffi Graf six one first set winner over Naoko Sawamatsu of Japan in Pardon me, Steffi Graf. Winning that first set over Naoko Sawamatsu, 6-1. Two breaks. Total domination. Thank you, Quiet Highlanders. Solid return off that second serve. She just ran around and buried it. part here is that Sawamatsu doesn't have game plan number two just because her game is uh, very limited this is the unfortunate part of having a one-dimensional game when you get up against the best players in the world you're stuck Bayashi, her coach, he's associate professor, professor at Osaka University. And her mom, Junko. Junko was a former uh, Wimbledon quarter finalist. Ah. Nako still has one more year of university to complete. Double break point. If Coach Umabayashi were smart, what he would do is have Naoko, after the U.S. Open, just play a whole series of matches where she had to 
come into the net on every point just so she learned to get comfortable in there it's pretty solid from the baseline she moves well back there but the game's evolving so quickly now she really has to develop some additional aspects otherwise she won't get any higher in the rankings Graf, three break opportunities, and she's won every one of them. And she this leads Naoko Sawamatsu, one game to love in this second set, winning the first one handily, six to one. Well, that uh, first set was really dominated by uh, uh, Steffi Graf. Uh, she uh, hit 14 winners versus Sawamatsu's two, so she's 12 ahead in that category. What I think we also have to keep in mind is that. Uh, Sawamatsu's error, she, she only had five unforced errors. Most of her errors were forced errors. And uh, uh, Steffi Graf uh, having a pretty good serving for serve percentage at 62. She's hitting the ball uh, very hard tonight. She's going for a lot of aces, putting Sawamatsu in difficulty. We'll take a break and come back with uh, Graf serving for the first time in this set after this. Chair umpire Donna Ring has announced time, and Graf is standing on the line ready to go as Naoko Sawamatsu leisurely walks back to position. Makes her late. She's been doing it all night. Fifteen thirty. Fifteen thirty. Break point for Sawamatsu. Her first break opportunity of the night. Desperation tennis. <laughs> Tremendous point for Salmatsu. Breaks back on serve, tied at one.
15 all. Nothing to this game. 15 all. Her grunting, she, for her, it, it sometimes can be a disadvantage because so it's all, it sounds like she's in trouble on almost every shot, and that's a great confidence builder for your opponent. <laughs> Steffi Graf says, don't you dare do that to me. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to really hit a forehand. Look at that, that tremendous wrist acceleration. That's the key to her forehand. In your face, Dennis. Graf just having a field day with that forehand. So anytime Sawamatsu is having to hit a second serve, Graf's just doing whatever she wants with it. Sawamatsu, two games to one. Fourteen players came to the Matinee Limited International as champions in 1993. Steffi Graf and Naoko Sawamatsu have won seven between them, six of them going to Graf. Arancha Sanchez Vicario has three. Yayuk Mizuki has two. Capriati Novotna, Garrison, Kurtzer, Fernandez, McNeil, Huber, Reinach, Medvedeva, Sorry. and Schultz each have one, along with Salmatsu, who was a winner at Strasbourg. It's too bad Yukosuki went out early. She's probably, of all the players in the tournament, uh, the most talented. I'm, I'm talking about actual stroke production. She's even can do more than Elisa Raymond can. Steffi Graf, up a break, leading two to one, serving the top of your screen in the second set. The unfortunate part with the Ayuk Basuki is she's just not as, as tough mentally as most of the players, and that's what's holding her back. speed of grass forehand does not allow one to have a lot of time to get set up here counteracting to one. She's on a roll.
15. Graf has now won eight straight points from Sawamatsu. Sometimes someone wins eight or well now nine straight points. A lot of times, the, quite a few unforced errors as part of that. But Graf is really winning the points tonight. There's very little that Sawamatsu can do. She's certainly not playing a, a bad game here. It's just she just doesn't have the the tools to, to be part of this match. Make it a a, a close one. Triple break point. Ten straight points. Steffi Graf has had five break opportunities tonight, and she has won every one of them. Four games to one. Salamatsu thought that was long, but the call went in Graf's favor. We'll take a break. Steffi Graf continues to roll against Naoko Salamatsu of Japan. Steffi Graf is uh, rolling against Naoko Salamatsu tonight. Salamatsu has held serve just once in this entire match. Well, that's actually what she does so well is, is take a ball, block it back. She strings her racket loosely, so she gets a lot of built-in natural power from the loose stringing. Salamatsu has done absolutely nothing to cause Graf any grief here. As you could drop shot, you could put her in hit oh. softer balls, you could, you could loop the ball, but she stayed in the same pattern as going down 6-1, 4-1. Double break point for Sawamatsu. Quite a turn of events.
fool you. Deuce. Well, part of the reason that drop shot worked is uh, what Steffi's yeah. been doing all night is hitting the ball so hard that Sawamatsu actually has to get going before Ste uh, Steffi actually hits the ball. So she uh, had to commit early on that one. Advantage graph. Steffi Graf, one game away from an advancing to the third round. 5-1, she leads Naoko Sawamatsu. She's made very few mistakes tonight. to go along with it. They've been few and far between for Sawamatsu tonight. <laughs> Winner number 22. All of them on her forehand. Double break point, double match point now for Graf. First break point that Graf has missed in six attempts. Whenever she's had success tonight, it's been when she's been able to keep the ball deep. Anything short, anything anywhere near the midcourt, Graf has pounded away for a, a winner or put Salamatsu in big trouble.
of Sawamatsu. Nice disguise. A lot of the players, you can usually tell when the drop shot's coming, simply because they shorten up their backswing. Graf, however, <laughs> has an effective drop shot because she get looks like she's going to hit the regular drive and then just at the last second turns her racket under. She can play. Tough competitor, tremendous concentration, probably one of the best players on the tour in terms of counterattacking. to Steffi Graf, but Grass has an opportunity to close out the match when we return. Naoko Sawamatsu down 5-2, but a gutsy performance in that last game, coming back from two break points with some solid play. That was uh, her best game of the match so far. Graf waiting impatiently. She wants to get home. Back to her hotel. And she was out uh, 45 seconds in advance of Salamatsu. Depth of the game. What's interesting here is that Salamazzo is, is very capable of, on a regular night, of hitting good depth. I think she just got intimidated oh. too early. Match point. So third match point. Point 
number four. And she's immediately ready to play. Just a little longer. Salomazzo, if she keeps the ball deep, she's been okay. Once it goes short, it's been a fast point. The ball goes long, just a bit too deep for Malko Salomazzo, stepping ground, but Mancha straight sets over her Japanese counterpart, 6-1 and 6-2 in 60 minutes. Heidi Graf. Quick and dirty. Well, two things uh, to look at in that match. First of all, uh, I'll, I'll, if uh, Naoko Salamatsu can take out of that match, the lesson that she can learn is let's get another dimension to the game. Let's serve and volley. Let's get in there. Steffi Graf, on the other hand, uh, let's give her uh, credit because she did a lot of things well tonight. She had a topspin backhand. She had good serving. She came into the net, won a lot of points. Bud Collins and Joanne Russell at Tennis Olympic Park. What would the price have been before the Olympics began that neither Chris Everett nor this woman, Steffi Groff, would win a medal in singles? What huge price. Groff actually seemed in danger of losing. She trailed three games to one in this, the final set. Now she's got it up to 5-3, but it's 15 all. The opponent, a Soviet, 22-year-old Larissa Savchenko of Laval. And Joanne. Oh. What has Savchenko been doing? Well, she's been attacking. She attacked there, but the ball was a little too short. And in the beginning, it worked. Steffi Groff made a lot of errors. She seemed out of it. Savchenko was playing great. She was leading 3-1, and now... The tide has turned. 30-15. Groff working on a 36-match winning streak. This would be 37, and she has match point. Steffi Groff has had 17 forehand winners, and that's not a lot for her. But from 3-1 down, Groff has been the West German Express, charging and chugging. It's match point. A medal point for Steffi Graf, assuring her of a bronze if she gets it, but we don't think she'll stop there. Oh, and there it is. Steffi Graf wins it. 6 4. 4 6, 6 2, 4 6, 6 3. And so she's into the semifinals. Bud Collins, Joanne Russell at tennis. We'll be back. The Americans today. Let's get a report from Bud Collins. Bud? One player in this world is on top of it right now, Bob, and that is Steffi Graf. If you talk about devastation, it was Steffi today. Zena Garrison of Houston, Zing and Z, came in here feeling she had a good shot. She'd beaten Pam Shriver. She broke Groff to lead two games to one in the first set. And what did that do to Steffi, Joanne? Well, I think it woke her up. She was a little bit asleep. She became more focused, and Zena had problems after that. She was in big trouble. 
And Zena was not playing badly, but Groff played better than I've ever seen her play. Yeah, she had 21 winners and only nine errors. It was the best I'd ever seen. Her backhand was unbelievable. She hit an equal number of winners from the backhand side as from the forehand. Zena was trading with her very well, but it was always Groff with the last smack, like this. Those legs that took the Wimbledon Championship away from Martina Navratilova, and now Steffi has rung up 38 successive victories. Oh. And that's that backhand I was talking about, the top spin she's worked on for the last two years. Zena Garrison at match point. She has the consolation of a bronze medal and the fact that she and Pam Shriver will play for the gold in doubles. So there it was as Groff won the last 11 games of the match. This is a Groff ritual, going to kiss her father, Peter Graff, and Joanne asked her how well she thought she played. Yeah, that's right. I mean, in the beginning, I think it was a great match. I mean, she was not really missing too much with the net, and I just kept, you know, passing her, and uh, I think I played the best backhand I've ever done, and I'm, I'm so excited because all the other couple days I wasn't playing too well. So there's Steffi Groff with her 38th consecutive victory. It is not news when Groff wins, but when she wins like that, Joanne, whoo, he makes you shudder. Yeah, she was unbelievable. And the fact that Zena didn't play all that bad, what Groff does to you is she makes you play b better than you s you try to play better. You and sometimes you do much. play better. Yeah, and, and the thing is, Zena went for too much, and she ended up with way too many errors. But otherwise, God, it was a fantastic match. It really was. Now, let's look down below our feet to Gabriel. Anyway, we pick it up with Bud Collins in the second set. Another cigarette for Papa Sabatini. But too many balls bouncing in front of Sabatini. Oh! Gabby thought the ball... They're still playing. You can't think the ball's out. You gotta wait for the call and keep hitting like Groff does. pretty close on the baseline, but Sabatini, she hangs in there and wins this point, but she definitely was not happy about that call. Number three, 17 for the tournament. But take a look at Sabatini. Her shirt is soaked. Sweat is pouring off her face. And Groff looks very fresh. So, uh-oh. Pam Shriver. Pam Shriver says, well, ladies, which of you can catch up with me with a gold medal? Another slight opening for the Argentine. Look out, Gabby! Oh. That's a smart play by Steffi Groff. Instead of going for a tricky angle, Gabby gets a Nassau bounce here, and Steffi says, I'm going down the middle, right at Gabby. Head hunting, 30 all. And a break point again. 
And Gabriella is one out of seven on break points. She needs to capitalize here. has a very good chance here, but no, she hits it short, and Groff has an easy time of passing her. Steffi is right on it every time, and you're right, once again, she chooses not to hit an overhead, goes with the backhand overhead, which is a harder shot. And you can't do much with it. Let's do Groff resisting a third break point in this set. Gabby. It's long. And she hit the wicket, Papa Osvaldo. That's a much more dangerous shot for a man. And Steffi Groff played this point badly. And here it is, the shot Yannick Noah made famous. Yes. And Gabby has it down pat, and she keeps playing. And Groff definitely made a mistake on such a good lob not to come in. And look at Gabriella Sabatini. She's ecstatic, and this could be a turnaround for her. So, break point. Net cord. Steffi, hey, what the heck? I don't care. You hit it between your legs. I'm still going to win the next point. Deuce. Two. Deuces. Oh, a very tired looking forehand. Gabrielle is standing in our way. It was pretty close. Oh, oh. gee, that hurts. There's that swinging forehand volley. You know, it, it may work against some other players, but that thing is not going to work against Steffi Graf. Advantage to Graf. A point for 5-3. She's had two points for 5-3. She has survived two break points and three deuces. Sabatini is fighting. No one can gainsay that. And one of the familiar Korean babies. We love babies at tennis in Korea. The baby is a Sabatini fan. 
She got it, but... And gets herself another deuce. But we have definitely seen a weakness for Gabriella Sabatini and Steffi Graf, probably because she played Sabatini so many times. She doesn't even do an overhead. It's just a high forehand smash. What is not, what, it, that is not as good as an overhead. And Steffi knows it, probably from playing doubles with her so many times. Well, this game is the crux of the match. If Gabby can somehow break through. Yeah. And Gabby, or Steffi, has actually gotten a let on one of those balls, very rare, and she's hit a couple of net court balls that have gone over. That's what happens to number one. Oh. Oh, baby, oh, baby. And Steffi Groff, you know, she gets everything into her forehand. She jumps off the ground. She just pounds that. And that's her 19th forehand winner. critical game, I believe. James. Successive serving games. So now, a weary Sabatini is trying to keep it going. Foot fault, the oh. second one called against her. One at each end, so no one line judge is discriminating. Ugh. They played an hour and 20 minutes. Just way over the Groff average. She's fatigued, and also, she gets Steffi on the run, and because she doesn't trust her overhead, she can't close in on the net. She's standing around the service line. on that particular ball didn't make didn't take a step for it didn't even look she just said if that goes in hey it's your point oh she mishit it and it helps her And it's once again MP, not only for match point, but medal point. Medal point. Gabriella Sabatini has fought well, but she's down 15-40, 3-5 in the second set against the woman she has beaten twice this year, Steffi Graf, for Graf's only losses. And there's a winner on second serve, as we've seen so many. Peter Groff, Brother Michael, Mother Heidi. And as usual, reporting to her family. Not as high a climb as Patrick Cash had at Wimbledon last year. Father and daughter, mentor and pupil. 
and a game gritty loser. The only player to beat Groff in 67 matches this year. She did it twice in Florida. Sabatini winning a silver, only the third Olympic medal in her country's history. In Steffi Groff, congratulations on what we at NBC call the quintessential quintuple. Four major titles plus the Olympic gold medal. How do you feel? I'm um, very excited to win this match now. I'm, I'm happy to come in the last four or five weeks, you know, and uh, I was really tired coming here, and I'm, I'm just happy that I got through with it now. Did you feel that you wore Gabby out? Well, I could feel it in the first couple of games already because she was getting, I had, I was, I mean, I would let her run a lot. So I thought, you know, if it's going to come to a third set, I think I have a good chance that I will sure win it. Steffi, is that why you use those drop shots in the match? Because you wanted to make uh, Gabby tired? Not only that, but um, she is always used that I'm going to play hard and uh, long. So once in a while, I wanted to change her rhythm and just get her to the net once in a while. Steffi, what is left for you? 19 years of age, what are your, what can you do now? Well, I can continue to play and... Uh, we hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I still like to play and uh, whatever I have achieved yet, I, I still gonna try always my best. When you thought about the Olympics, you were named to the team a long time ago. Uh, what were your Olympic thoughts right at the very beginning? Tennis hadn't been in the games in our lifetimes. Yeah, um, I was happy that tennis was coming back actually because I was in 84 in Los Angeles and what I've experienced there, it was just amazing to me. And I always hoped that I'm gonna come once in a while back to the Olympics. And so I was happy that it's in the Olympics now. Well, we thank you for coming to the Olympics. And once again, congratulations to the winner of the quintessential quintuple. Okay, thanks. So, Steffi Graf has her gold, her 39th consecutive victory, 6-3, 6-3.